Ukrainian forces pushed on with their major cross-border advance into Russia's Kursk region for a second week, claiming that they took more ground, captured more Russian prisoners and destroyed a bomber in attacks on military airfields. Recall the surprise Ukrainian push into the Kursk region that began on August the 6th has rattled the Kremlin. The daring operation is the largest attack on Russia since World War II and could involve as many as 10,000 Ukrainian troops, backed by armor and artillery, military analysts say. Ukrainian defenders continue to advance in Russia's Kursk region. Since the start of August the 14th, the defense forces have captured over 100 Russian soldiers. Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Alexander Sirsky, reported this to President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. According to Ukraine's army chief, Ukrainian forces have advanced by one to two kilometers in various areas of the Kursk region today, capturing more than 100 Russian soldiers during this period. Security Service of Ukraine's officers also said they captured over 100 Russian soldiers in Russia's Kursk region. Among the prisoners are soldiers of Kadyrov's Akhmat unit, according to RBC Ukraine's intelligence sources. Security Service of Ukraine's special forces captured 102 Russian servicemen in the Kursk region. This is the most massive capture of the Russian troops that has ever been carried out in one go. The special operation was carried out by soldiers of the Security Service of Ukraine's Central Special Operations Center A. They captured and cleared an extensive, concrete and well-fortified company stronghold with underground communications and accommodation for personnel, a canteen, armory and even a bathhouse. Russian troops were not going to surrender. They had more than enough provisions and ammunition, the sources say. The Security Service Ukraine officers captured 102 servicemen of the 488th Guards Motorized Rifle Regiment of the Russian Armed Forces and the Akhmat Unit, a special forces unit stationed in Chechnya. Recall, after the Ukrainian military's incursion into the Russian region of Kursk, many Russian soldiers are said to have been captured. This was announced by the state Ukrainian project Kochu Neti, the humanitarian project launched by the Ukrainian Military Intelligence Service in January 2024 serves as a coordination center for Russian prisoners of war in Ukraine. It aims to help military personnel of the Russian army find their relatives. According to Kochu Neti, both conscripts and contract soldiers are among the captives. There is also information about the dead whose bodies were not taken away by their comrades during the retreat, it said in the statement. According to some informations, the number of Russians captured in Kursk exceeded a thousand. In this case, according to Sirsky, the search and destruction of enemy in the town of Sudza has been completed. Sirsky claims Ukrainian forces have advanced into 1,000 square kilometers. In his report to the president, Alexander Sirsky stated that the Ukrainian army mainly focuses on the directions of Toretsk and Pokrovsk to prevent further Russian advances. Please let us know if anything is lacking. We can provide it. I understand it's challenging, but we can find ways to strengthen our troops in these areas, Zelensky said. More than half of all homes and businesses in Puerto Rico have been left without power, following the arrival of Storm Ernesto. The Caribbean island's main power supplier Luma Energy said some 998,000 customers did not have access to electricity, according to CBS News. Ernesto developed just days after Debbie finished its move along the U.S. East Coast, where it left at least eight people dead, including children, as a Category 1 hurricane-turned tropical storm. A dangerous storm surge is expected to produce significant coastal flooding on Bermuda in areas of onshore winds. Near the coast, the surge will be accompanied by large and destructive waves, the National Hurricane Center said. Ernesto is expected to produce total rain accumulations of 4 to 8 inches in Bermuda with isolated maximum amounts up to 12 inches. This rainfall may result in considerable life-threatening flash flooding. Puerto Rico Governor Pedro Pierluisi said the power outages also left more than 200,000 homes and businesses without water. Earlier, President Joe Biden approved an emergency declaration for Puerto Rico, ordering the federal government to assist in local response efforts. Ahead of the storm, officials in Puerto Rico closed government offices, shuttered schools, activated the National Guard, and opened hundreds of shelters. 
Forecasters expect Ernesto to drift for a couple of days along the warm waters of the western Atlantic toward Bermuda before eventually developing into a major hurricane and remaining far east of the continental US.